In this short video, we're going to introduce the concept of related rates with an example. We have a particle which is traveling around a path that has an equation x squared plus y to the fourth equals 32. And we are being asked at what rate is the y coordinate of the particle changing when the x coordinate is changing at a rate of two meters per second at the point four comma negative two. So as the particle moves around the path, its x coordinate and y coordinate are changing and we're told at a specific point how the x coordinate is changing and we'd like to calculate how the y coordinate is changing at what rate. So in this case, both x and y are functions of time. The word rate implies change with respect to time. So we're going to find an equation, or in this case, use the given equation, and use implicit differentiation with respect to a third variable time. We're going to differentiate implicitly with respect to t. And we'll have to use the chain rule for both x and y since both x and y depend on t. So how are we going to approach this? First thing, we want to organize our information. And so the first question is, well, what do we know? And really, in, in particular, what rates do we know? Well, we're told that the x-coordinate is changing at a rate of two meters per second. So we know that dx by dt equals two. And what's being asked? Well, let's see, we knew that dx by dt equals two. We'd like to know what is dy by dt when x equals four and y equals negative two. So finally, how are they connected? Well, we already saw how they're connected. They're connected via this formula. Now, in other examples, we'll see that can be the most challenging part of the entire question is to determine what is the formula that connects the rate that we know to the rate that we're being asked about. So we know that dx dt is two. We'd like to know what is dy dt when x equals four and y equals negative two, and we're given this formula. So to get rates, that is rates of change with respect to time, we are going to have to differentiate implicitly with respect to time. And we need to pause and, and ask ourselves, of all of these letters and all of these symbols, what is changing with respect to time? And in this case, the only thing that's changing with respect to time, x, and y, 32, is a constant. And what's constant or fixed? That's 32. So we have to be careful. One of the, the most common mistakes is that people start to make substitutions early in the process. Substitutions are going to be the very last step so the substituting x equals four and y equals negative two, we are not going to do that until the very last step. All right, so now uh, I'll differentiate both sides implicitly with respect to t. And I'll find that two x times dx dt plus four y cubed dy dt equals zero. I'm just using the chain rule. Derivative of x squared would be 2x 
but then the derivative of the inside is dx dt. The derivative of y to the power of 4 would be 4y cubed times the derivative of the inside dy dt. And the derivative of a constant is always 0. So then doing some algebra, I can solve that for dy by dt. And my very last step, as promised, is to substitute my given values. My dx dt equals 2, x equals 4, y equals negative 2, and I get 1 half meter per second. So remember, when we evaluate, we put in this evaluation bar. We're not going to claim that dy dt is always equal to 1 half. It's only equal to 1 half under the condition that dx dt equals 2, that x equals 4, and y equals negative 2. And that's what the evaluation bar does for us. All right, so last uh, part of this question would be, suppose that I do know I've calculated that dy dt is 1 half. I'm given dx dt is uh, 2 meters per second. And so the question is, is the particle moving clockwise or counterclockwise around the path? Well, here at 4 comma negative 2 is where I've calculated it. And I know that the change in the x coordinate is positive. The change in the y coordinate is positive. And so the only way that could be is if it's moving counterclockwise. So let's review our strategy for solving related rates problems. First thing we want to do is identify what rate is known or given in the question. Then identify what rate is asked for. What are we looking for in that question? And then we need to find an equation or formula which relates what is known to what is being asked. That's why I made this previous video about some review for geometry formulas, because sometimes it's a simple geometry formula. Other times, though, we needed to do some analysis, or we will need to do some analysis using similar figures, or maybe using some uh, trig formulas. Once we have that equation, we're going to differentiate implicitly with respect to t. We need to make sure that we identify in that formula whatever is changing with time and use the chain rule with each variable that is changing with time. Then we do some algebra. We're going to solve for the rate. And in the very last step, that's when we'll substitute known rates and other known values to answer the question. So we refer to this strategy in our next videos where we'll solve several problems of where we have to use different techniques.